This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. I hope your day is getting off to a great start. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Bill Bryant. Kentucky Morning Start right here on WKYT, including this Tuesday, May 10th. Now at 6, the NAACP is planning a rally outside of Lexington Catholic High School. We're live to explain why. Also, Hillary Clinton coming to Lexington today. It's just a week away from Kentucky's primary. And deadly storms that swept across the nation's midsection are now headed this way. Luckily, I do not expect that type of outbreak. However, we're still looking at that first alert severe weather day due to the fact I do expect some severe storms later on. We're going to watch that. I'm going to track the timing on that going off towards your evening and night coming up in just about 10 minutes. Now, as Micah said, this is a WKYT first alert severe weather day, and this is why forecasters are warning that the violent weather that struck the plains is expected to move into the Ohio and Tennessee valleys today. Substantially diminished from this, of course, but tornadoes in Oklahoma are blamed for at least two deaths. There is also damage in Nebraska, where there was a miraculous story of survival. A man clung to a tree while watching his home be blown away. He had minor injuries. Stay up to the minute on weather in your area by downloading the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. Uh, here's a story we'll be following throughout the day. Overnight, news broke that Lexington's chapter of the NAACP is planning to rally today outside Lexington Catholic High School. The rally follows months of race-related issues at the school. WKYT's Mike Byer is there live with this story that has a lot of people talking this morning. Mike? Good morning, Michelle. That's right. A lot of people are talking about this story, which has stirred up a firestorm with the NAACP, who plans to rally outside of the school at nine this morning. Now, this rally comes after several race-related issues have stirred with inside the school's wall, uh, inside the school walls in these past few months. In one instance, a 17-year-old student was charged with terroristic threatening and harassment. The charges came after a 14-year-old African-American Lexington Catholic football player said the teen, who was his teammate, sent him racially charged and threatening messages. In a news release, the NAACP said they met twice with the Bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington. The NAACP says those meetings haven't led to any changes in the school's culture. Last week, Lexington Catholic High School leaders said they weren't working, said they were working with local and national diversity experts. A spokesperson for the school told us last night the school was unaware the rally had been planned. Now, we've reached out to the school for further comment, but at this time, we have not heard back. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. Mike, thank you very much. And Kentucky's primary is now a week from today, and the presidential campaign trail is again winding through the Commonwealth. Hillary Clinton is planning two major stops in Kentucky today. WKYT's Mark Barber is live with our coverage of campaign 2016. Mark? Good morning, Bill. When Hillary Clinton visited Kentucky last week, she focused heavily on jobs and improving opportunities in the workplace. And we expect that that will continue to be a big part of the conversation as she meets with young working parents here at Lexington's Family Care Center on Red Mile Place. Her private meeting with these parents will be at 12:15 this afternoon. After Clinton speaks with Lexington families, she will head to Louisville for another private meeting with families. Her first stop in the Commonwealth that will be open to the public will be at 6.15 tonight at Slugger Field in Louisville. Former President Bill Clinton will also be returning to Kentucky this week to continue campaigning for his wife. He drew large crowds in Lexington, Moorhead and Louisville last week when he talked about his wife's policies on education, job creation and the coal industry. The details of his campaign stop have not been released yet. Bill and Hillary Clinton only have one more week to sway Kentucky voters. The Democratic primary here is next Tuesday. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. It appears that Clinton's challenger is poised to win West Virginia's primary today, but Bernie Sanders still trails far behind Clinton in the delegate count. Presumptive GOP nominee Donald Trump is running unopposed now after Ted Cruz and John Kasich ended their campaigns last week. There is also a primary in Nebraska today. New on WKYT this morning, police say the man who robbed a Lexington gas station wore some distinct clothing. The man had a Mardi Gras mask and pink socks on his hands when police say he robbed the Speedway on Paris Pike just after 2 o'clock this morning. They also say he was covered from head to toe and did not speak at all during the robbery. Instead, police say he pointed a gun and the clerk and he made hand gestures and demanded money. About 30 minutes before, police say a man was robbed by a gunman on Appian Way. The victim says he was walking when a man came up from behind, pulled out a gun, and stole his wallet. 
Police lost track of the suspect at the nearby apartment complex. A judge has set a bond at a million dollars for an Owsley County woman who's accused of killing her parents. Lynette McQuinn is charged with murder and tampering with evidence. On Friday, state police say she shot her parents, John and Ada McQuinn, in their home near Boonville. McQuinn's next court hearing is set for May 26th. The father of a Knox County murder victim says he talked to the suspect the day before the crime. Police say Shane Mills was shot and killed in his home last week. Police later arrested Richard Brown and charged him with murder. They say Brown admitted to shooting Mills twice. Mills's father says Brown was in his store last week. He says Brown asked questions about the store, even asking when it would close. I'm wanting them to hang him if they can or give him nature cheer because he killed my son in cold blooded murder. He had no gun, he had no shot. He was most likely asleep. Mills also says when his wife called her son after hearing gunshots, Brown answered the phone and lied about being there to fix a sink. Investigators are trying to figure out how a man died in a Wayne County cave. 57 year old Anthony Arisman was found dead Sunday night, about 200 feet into a cave off Allerhalt Road. The coroner says Arisman had experience exploring caves and he did not have any signs of trauma. New this morning, a group of hikers from Lexington was safely rescued from the Red River Gorge. The Wolf County Search and Rescue Team says three college students got lost while climbing in an area called the Zoo. The search team was able to get the lost hikers on the phone before putting a new app to use, giving them a good idea of where to search. We have a few showers out and about toward the eastern zones, but all eyes still back toward the west. Now, this is your line. This is the first piece of energy. The first wave has already moved on through. The second wave actually comes with this one. The third wave is the one we're going to be concerned about later on this evening. So let's talk about this one. This travels on through, I would say, gets off into our western zones right around 9 to 10 a.m. Around here in Lexington, roughly midday, give or take an hour or so, and it looks to push on through. The farther it gets away from its energy back toward the west, lesser likelihood of it actually sticking together. So don't expect it to be extremely strong as it rolls on through. It's the one off toward the evening we're going to be watching very closely. So on and off through the day, you will get breaks. It's not going to rain all day on you. And then once we hit that 6 p.m. to about midnight time frame, that's when we expect those storms to become severe. That's your severe timing. Okay, damaging winds, large hail, and also the possibility of an isolated tornado or two uh, will be with us today. I do want to reiterate this. This is not the outbreak type of situation that we just saw in Oklahoma. It's the same system, but it's not the same strength, okay? As it gets a little bit closer to us, it loses a lot of that strength, but nonetheless, it's just enough to throw off some severe weather, with a slight risk across the region. Many uncertainties with this. I'll go ahead and tell you that and be honest with you that you know, the cloud cover, the rain, how that's going to affect the energy later on this afternoon. Is there going to be a lot of energy when these storms roll on through? That's something to really watch out for. If you get a lot of sunshine today, that's bad news. If you don't, that actually helps us out. So the rain early on is actually helping us out. 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. is when we expect the severe timing, not thunderstorm timing, but severe timing. 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. back toward the northwest. As we look back toward the north and northeast, down into the bluegrass region and off toward the Cumberland area, that's 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. is when you can expect that to come on through. That does include Lexington. And then down toward the southeast, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m is when you expect these storms to roll on through. That's another uncertainty is the timing on this. We'll have to watch this closely. That's what I'm feeling right now, just looking at these different models, because mm -hmm. a lot of these particular models aren't really matching up with each other. And when that happens, it drops your confidence as a forecaster on the timing on this. We'll have to watch it as it gets a little bit closer. But as of right now, that's the best bet I have on um, the handle on this timing. You know, it's tough when you have to hope against sunshine. Right, <laughs> you know? right. You always love sunshine. I know. Not days yeah, like this. It'll You're fire right. up those storms. All right, Micah, thank you very much. Our time right now is 6.09, and each morning we bring you weather and traffic together right here. Let's go to Officer Don and check on what's happening on the roads. Good morning.
Good morning. Well, not a lot on the circle. We just checked. The inner and outer loops look okay. Even the exit ramps at Richmond Road, Alumni, Tates Creek in great shape. On the north side, no trouble just yet. Let's get a look at overall traffic flow first this morning. Give you an idea of what's happening as you plan to head out the door. We're in pretty good shape toward downtown. No major issues there. On our drive times, it's a, basically the ride we would expect coming in from Nicholasville now, running at 12 to 14 minutes. Inbound from Winchester still looks okay on 64. No significant issues there, about 22 minutes. And from Paris, about 18. Now back to you in the studio. All right, Don, thank you so much. And Officer Don and Deanna are on 98 won the Bull. When you get in your car, you can listen to them this morning. 610 now on WKYT this morning. Several people were hurt in an early morning stabbing at a train station in Germany. What we know about today's attack in three minutes. We'll have that ahead. And also, want to get close to the royal family? Buckingham Palace is hiring it. We'll have details on the job offer coming up this morning. Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT this morning. Welcome back to WKYT this morning. Your time is 614. German police say a man is in custody after a deadly stabbing at a train station near Munich. Police say the suspect expressed political motivations during the attack. One person died in a hospital after the stabbing that wounded several others. A police spokesman says the suspect is a 27-year-old German national. Canadian officials say a plan will be developed within the next two weeks to return the 88,000 people forced by a wildfire to evacuate Alberta's Fort McMurray. Some had to be moved twice, first from their homes and then from the evacuation sites. Authorities say about 2,400 homes and other buildings in Fort McMurray were destroyed. All civic buildings and schools in use were spared. A pretrial hearing is set for today for a former University of Cincinnati police officer charged with murder in the fatal shooting of a driver during a traffic stop. Ray Tensing is also charged with voluntary manslaughter in the death of Samuel DeBooz. He was pulled over near the campus for missing a front license plate. The Pentagon has confirmed that a top Islamic State leader in Iraq's Anbar province has been killed by a coalition airstrike. Abu Wahib and three others were killed when their vehicle was hit last week. A senior U.S. official said it was an American airstrike. Wahib is said to be a former member of al-Qaeda in Iraq and has appeared in Islamic State execution videos. The Pentagon says his death is a blow to the group's leadership. Bernie Sanders is urging his supporters to keep the faith despite Hillary Clinton's substantial lead among pledge delegates and superdelegates. Sanders is hoping to cut into that lead with a string of victories starting with West Virginia today. Meanwhile, Clinton is making two stops in Kentucky today ahead of the primary here next Tuesday. Good morning. Your time is 616. Facebook is denying allegations. It manipulates its trending news section for political purposes. The tech blog Gizmodo reported that some Facebook employees were told to suppress stories from conservative news sources. Topics that did not make the cut include Mitt Romney and U.S. Senator from Kentucky Rand Paul. Now, Facebook says it's found no evidence the anonymous allegations are true. T-Mobile phones will now work in Cuba. The mobile carrier reached a deal giving its American customers cell service while they're on the island. Cell phones are rare in Cuba. T-Mobile customers will also be able to call into Cuba from the U.S. at lower than normal rates. Washing machines and refrigerators are coming to nearly 500 J.C. Penney stores. The company tested the sale of major appliances in 22 markets earlier this year and will now expand the sales to nearly half their stores. Now we don't know if that includes the J.C. Penney at Lexington's Fayette Mall. Help wanted at Buckingham Palace. The British royal family is looking for a new trainee butler. You'll welcome guests, polish silver, and handle luggage. You won't make but about $23,000 a year, but the job does come with a free room in Buckingham Palace. Not too bad, huh, Bill? Ah, uh, it sounds like a job, right? <laughs> Lots of folks probably apply for uh, that uh, opportunity. Our time this morning is 617 on WKYT. We're just getting started with the latest news on your Tuesday. Many new parents do it. Coming up, why researchers say swaddling your newborn, though, can be dangerous. And we're looking at some storms heading our direction on this first alert severe weather day. I'm going to show you when you can expect these storms and also when you expect the severe weather threat. Two different pieces. I'm going to show you that coming up.
Kentucky mornings start here. You're watching WKYT This Morning. Good morning again. 621 is the time on WKYT. On your Tuesdays, we watch for storms later today. Yeah, it is the first alert severe weather day, so just prepare as you head out the door. The Lexington chapter of the NAACP plans to rally outside Lexington Catholic High School today. That's what's trending at this hour. That rally comes weeks after a 17 year old student was suspended in relation to racially charged messages allegedly sent to a 14 year old teammate. Today's rally is scheduled to begin at 9 o'clock this morning. Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton will be in Lexington today for a private event before she holds a public rally at Louisville Slugger Field this evening. Her husband is also expected to be in the Commonwealth this week. Kentucky's primary is a week from today. Lexington police are looking for the man who was wearing a Mardi Gras mask and pink socks on his hands. When they say he pulled a gun on the clerk at the Speedway on Paris Pike overnight and silently demanded cash. They lost track of him at an apartment complex on Rogers Road. Watching weather very closely today, here's WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris on a severe weather day. We still have some showers over toward eastern Kentucky trying to move on out. A big break over toward the western zones. Nothing really going on right now. However, look at this line of thunderstorms heading our direction. This is not your severe weather concern. Your concern actually comes later on this evening. But I do want to show you this, okay? So here's the second wave. We already had our first wave. It's moving on out. This is our second wave, a little stronger wave, obviously. But your actual system still is back toward Missouri, okay? So it, the farther that this gets away from that system, away from that energy, the energy is right here. So the farther this gets away, less your likelihood of it actually staying together or it actually being as strong as what it is right now. I don't expect it to be that strong as it rolls on through. However, you'll get a few rumbles of thunder and also some showers out of that. But once we travel off into the evening hours, that's when your severe chance comes into play, okay? So you can have some on and off showers and thunderstorms through the day, but your severe chance is later on this evening. Now through Thursday, I mean, you're talking today, Wednesday, Thursday. You're talking three consecutive days of at least a marginal risk of severe storms. So this is going to be a pretty active next three days. Good news here is we're going to get a break toward Friday. That's exactly what we need after the next three days, guys, it's going to be pretty active as we uh, travel off towards your weekend. Your weekend, only a couple of rooms of, th uh, of thunder, but this is just an active seven-day forecast. I'm going to show you that in just about 10 minutes. Right. As we said earlier, just sort of have to pick your spots here and there where there may be uh, some clear skies. Maybe, Maybe Friday looks pretty good, so we'll watch. Uh, 624 right now, an important story for new parents out there. Swaddling could put your baby at greater risk for SIDS. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. Swaddling is when babies are wrapped up tightly in a blanket with just the head exposed. Now, according to the study, swaddled babies placed on their sides or stomachs are twice as likely to die from the syndrome. Researchers say overheating could be a factor. The risk is less for babies who sleep on their backs. The Golden State Warriors' Steph Curry is proving why he is the NBA's most valuable player two years in a row. Yeah, Curry returned from a sprained right knee to score an NBA record 17 points in overtime against the Portland Trail Blazers. He finished the night with 40 points in last night's game, helping his team take a 3-1 to -one lead in the Western Conference semifinals. The Warriors need to win one more game to win the series against the Trailblazers. And he said, you know what? I'm back. Oh, he's a tough player. Yes, he is. <laughs> no doubt. Listen up, Harry Potter fans. The game of Quidditch is real. Well, sort of. A yeah. team of skydivers <laughs> uh, brought the fantasy wizard sport to life by squaring off in a broomstick bout in midair. The high-flying act was a PR stunt for a Colombian communications company. These may be mere muggles, but they play like Potter pros. Even the series author was impressed by it, retweeting the video to millions of followers. Seem to enjoy that. Well, that's impressive. Look at him. He just <laughs> no. rides his broom. <laughs> you up for a broom ride today? <laughs> Uh, yes, that actually sounds fun. It does, doesn't it? Yes, All it right. Does. Uh, the time this morning is 625, and we're coming right back on WKYT this morning. The turnover continues for the UK women's basketball program. Who Coach Mitchell is losing this time? That's coming up at 630. All of our top stories are on the way. Tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is $150 million. Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot is $40 million. Kentucky mornings start right here on WKYT, and we'll be right back.